find out. So this term, the millennium, uh, guys, it refers to the literal 1,000 year physical reign of Jesus on this literal earth, where he will literally establish his literal kingdom for about a thousand literal, no, exactly, a thousand literal years on this literal earth. Okay, <laughs> literally. <laughs> <laughs> Buenos dias, mis amigos. Okay, so this uh, these jokers, um, aside from having an image of a dragon on their television screen and cracking jokes, they're teaching little children that Jesus is going to be on Earth for exactly one thousand years, and then the end of the world will come. Now, that's not in the Bible at all. Okay. Now I get it. 99% of the uh, pastors, preachers today, they teach this. But they're all, they all got it wrong. And if anybody wonders why I keep talking about Revelation 20, this is why. Because they all got it wrong. They all got it wrong. And I feel absolutely compelled. It's just incredible to me how easy it is to see the simplicity of Revelation 20 and how astonishing it is that so many people, almost everybody, are completely blind to it. So, I'm going to walk you through Revelation 20. It's so simple, so simple, and so easy, and it correlates, corresponds with everything that we read in the Bible. It's a vision, right? It's a vision from God given to John. Just as we read, uh, just as we read, read in Revelation one, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. So the visions are coming to John, and John's telling us about these visions. So the angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottom, is putting a great chain in his hand. Here's another vision. There's another vision. All right. To show unto his servants, us that are saved, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John and I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand and he laid hold on the dragon that old serpent which is the devil and Satan and bound him a thousand years now first of all I, I want you to take the chalkboard of your brain and take that eraser and just erase everything erase everything forget everything that anybody's ever said to you and believe only the written Word of God just try that you're not gonna lose the truth first of all we got the written Word of Truth and we got the Spirit of Truth to, sh to show us right to bring into remembrance all things you got nothing to lose. You got nothing to worry about. Just wipe that chalkboard clean. All right, you're not going to lose the truth. All right. And I saw an angel. So here's a vision, and he laid hold of the old serpent, the dragon. All right, bound him a thousand. Years. What could this possibly mean? Well, you know that in the Old Testament that there was one country one nation of God's people right <clears throat> you take um, in Egypt there was the Hebrew people outside of God's people were the nations deceived right so the Hebrew people they escape Egypt and they go into their own land and they are, they are God's people. Right? They are their own country. 
outside of this country, outside of this nation, were the nations deceived by Satan. Think of it this way. Inside this nation, the nation of God, the children of Israel, the people of God, was the kingdom of God or the spirit of God was over them. Right? So they have the spirit of God watching over them, the spirit of God guiding them out of Egypt into this new land. And outside of this nation, outside of the people of God, were the nations deceived. Now, here comes Jesus, and he tears down the wall, right? He tears down that wall. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. Who is that nation? It's those of us that believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the wall has been taken down. Now Satan no longer has his own nations to himself because the kingdom of God is available to whosoever believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's pretty simple stuff, man. So you understand that. You understand about that from the Old Testament, the transformation into the New Testament. And he cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed a little season. That little season is at the end of the world. When we are lifted up into the air, right? When we that are born of God are lifted up into the air, right? So what happens when you remove all of God's people out of this world? You have nothing but unsaved people on earth. Just like you had in the Old Testament outside of of the nation of God outside of the children of Israel outside were the nations deceived right so outside of the people of God are the nations deceived by Satan by the devil by the old serpent the dragon alright it's pretty simple isn't it so when we are lifted up in the air, then Satan has all those people on the earth all to himself. Right? And this goes all the way back to Genesis 3, verse 16. When the Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, what I say, 16, 15. Excuse me, verse 15. The Lord said to the serpent, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Alright, so like in Psalm, uh, Psalm 110, for example. I will, the examples everywhere, really. Psalm 110. Uh, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Right, so in Genesis 3. The Lord is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. Okay? Again, same thing in Psalm 10. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent. And like what we read yesterday might as well go there oh until I make thy foes thy footstool right 
But he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou at my right hand, until I make thy foes thy footstool. Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying all evil forever. For he must reign till he has put all enemies under his feet. All right. So what happens when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven? We are lifted up. We are separated. It's the separation of the wheat and the tares. Right? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout of the voice of the archangel with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. And the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and he shall send forth his angels to gather together the elect. It's the same moment in time. Same moment. There's that separation. When there's that separation, this is when Satan is loosed. Because now he's got all these people on the earth all to himself. Right? Right? And I saw thrones. Now, before I proceed, it's important to have read Revelation 1. It's important to read the whole Bible. Okay. So, I mean, we can go, we can go to, uh, let's do this first. All right. So, when you understand the Bible, right, you ought to understand this stuff pretty simply, shouldn't you? I mean, if you go back to Exodus 19 in the Old Testament, when the Lord said, You shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. All right, consider that. All right, consider that. Now let's go to, see if I can remember this. Be interesting. At first, Peter 2, there it is. Ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation, a peculiar people. We are a royal nation, uh, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Right? In, in Exodus 19, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. A peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Right? A peculiar treasure unto me above all people all right and so first peter chapter 2 a chosen generation of royal priesthood and holy nation of peculiar people we are the nation of god we are the children of israel we are the holy people of god we are royalty we are royal tea and we are kings and priests unto God. All right? Revelation chapter one verse six Jesus Christ has made us kings and priests unto God. Okay. So we are kings and priests. Under God. So we, as kings, we have thrones, spiritual thrones, heavenly thrones, however you want to describe it. We are kings right now. Right now, we are kings and priests. Has made us. Has made us kings and priests. We are royalty right now. We are kings unto God right now. We are priests of God right now. It's important when you're reading this, okay, in order to understand it. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And judgment was given unto them. Judgment was given unto them. All right, let's go. 
figure out what that means. Judgment was given to us right now. Have, has judgment have been already given to us? Well, the, the answer is pretty simple. Yes, you know it. If you're born of God, you know that we are sealed unto the day of redemption. Nothing can take that away. That'll never change. We are So the judgment of God has already been given to us. It's already been decided. There's no turning back now. In John chapter 11, Jesus says, Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. If God has given you everlasting life right now, then you shall never die right now. You shall, right now, the judgment of God has already been given to you. When you are born of God, it's already been decided. Judgment has already been given to you. The judgment of everlasting life. God saw you, and God gave you eternal life. The judgment of God. The judgment of eternal life. You can't deny that. And it's so simple, you should have known this. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So let's focus on this part. Now, this part here is included with those of us that are saved. Those of us that have eternal life. Those of us that the judgment of God has been given to us. This is included among them. This is the time period in which we live in right now. Where people have gotten their head cut off. And we live among people that worship the beast. And the, all this, uh, this stuff here, um, worship the beast and his image and the mark and all that sort of thing. All that is is people that do not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Those that are not saved. That's it. It's not rocket science, man. When you are saved, you are marked by God. And until you are marked by God, you have the mark of this world. And you will follow after this world. It's not complicated. It's not a comic book, right? This is simplicity. This is simple, all right? This is very simple. Now, again, this stuff here, just in, it's included with all of us that are saved. And of course, these things are happening. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And I, this is, uh, it's incredible. It's astonishing, really. You notice here, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. It does not say Jesus reigns a thousand years. It would be rather stupid if it did. Because that would be con in, in contradiction to what we read in Luke chapter 1, for example. Just one example. All right, one example ought to be enough. It would in Luke 1, 33, And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, not a thousand years, but forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Right now Jesus Christ reigns today, yesterday, and forever. I mean, there's no end to his kingdom. He shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. So you're flat out lying when you say that Jesus will reign in the future, that he doesn't reign now, and that he'll reign for a thousand years. And then like, it's over. That's it. Show's over, fellas. You got your 1,000 year party, now it's over. I, what in the world is going on? 
Uh, people ain't putting any thought at all whatsoever into what they're teaching. It's crazy. It Right here it says they, talking about us that are saved, during this time period, which is obviously now, they lived and reigned with, with, with Christ right now. So uh, what are you going to do? Are you Are going to say, oh, I'm not reigning with Christ right now? Well, then you're not saved. Why would you say that? Unless you aren't saved. When you are born of God, you have Christ in you. You have the Spirit of God in you. You have the Savior in you. You are born of Him. And now you're going to say you're not? I, I, uh, that's, there's a problem there, man. There's a problem. There's a problem. If you're you're by your own words, you're saying you're not saved. If you're saying that you don't reign with Christ right now, and this is clearly again, I, I can't I say it a thousand times, and it, it's like it, people never can hear it. They can never see it. They can never understand it because they don't believe what it says. They, speaking of those of us that are saved, live and reign with Christ during this time period. But the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. What's that mean, the first resurrection? Well, first of all, I guess, just just to clarify, just to make sure you understand, the rest of the dead live not again until the thousand years are finished. This, When the thousand years are finished, it's the end of the world, okay? Now, who is the first resurrection? Do you think you're the first resurrection? Well, you're not even reigning with Christ. How could you be the first resurrection? By your own words, you're not saved. So how could you be the first resurrection? All right, so that's not going to work for you. The first resurrection. <laughs> well, again, it's interesting to me that no, all these people, they don't want to believe anything Jesus says. They don't want to believe anything that Jesus says. Jesus says, I am the resurrection. Nah, he's not the first resurrection. He can't possibly be the first resurrection, can he? He says, I am the resurrection. And then here in Revelation 20, this is the first resurrection. He can't put the two together. I am the resurrection, the first resurrection. I am the resurrection, the first resurrection. Oh, I don't know if it's Jesus or not. Well, I don't know how you don't see it, man, honestly. You ought to know that Jesus Christ is the first resurrection and that we are partakers of his resurrection and we live and reign with him right now. We have everlasting life right now. Right now we shall never die. Right now we are partakers of his resurrection resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection right Jesus says I am the resurrection and then in 1st Corinthians 15 right now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept for since by man came death, by man also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the firstfruits. Afterward 
they that are Christ at his coming. See? How, how simple, amazing, incredible that is? Jesus is the first resurrection. We are partakers of his resurrection. It's consistent all with everything that we're reading all throughout the Bible. On such the second death has no power. Right? Though he were dead, yet shall he live. The second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Right? Shall be priests of God and of Christ. And has made us kings and priests unto God. Right? We are a royal priesthood and a holy nation. Has, and they shall be priests of God and of Christ. Shall reign with him. With him. It's not saying that Jesus only oh, you know, reigns a thousand years and it's all over, fellas. No, it doesn't say that at all, man. It's talking about us. We, they, they, the priest of God, the believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, the saved, the people of God, the chosen ones, reign with him a thousand years because he reigns forever and ever and ever and ever. There's Of his kingdom there is no end. But we reign with him during this thousand years. And then the thousand years are expired, which is the end of the world. Right? And Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Again, we are up in the air. And so now, all the people on earth are unsaved and doomed. And so, what? what's his purpose? Yeah, yeah, it's incredible to me. The whole thing's incredible. So many people. So, well, why does Satan let loose? Why did they let him? Well, the Bible says why he let loose. Why are you asking that question? Why don't you just read the Bible? <laughs> I mean, really, just read. It tells you why. Why does Satan let loose? Well, it tells you why. It, he Okay. And Satan shall be let out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, God and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. That's why Satan's let loose. Are you not paying attention? Is there something wrong with your brain that you can't see it? It tells us exactly why Satan is let loose. All right? So, it's important, truly, it's important to understand that when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, we are lifted up into the air. Right? We are lifted up in the air. We are separated from the unsaved. So, when Satan goes out to deceive the nations, you think he's going to go out to deceive you? Well, you're in the wrong nation, partner. You're in the wrong club. I recommend you getting out of that club. That's not that's not a good club. All right. Now, the holy city of God, Jerusalem, is above, right? That's important to know. It's important to know that, right? Jerusalem, which is above, is free and is the mother of us all. Okay? Now, if we go to John 14, if I can get the number right here. John 14. Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you in my Father's house. It's above. He's talking about above. He's talking about Jerusalem, which is above. If we're not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be also. Consistent. Jesus ascended to heaven, and then he will descend from heaven and gather us together. We read this in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. It's consistent all throughout the Bible. 
right? In Genesis 3, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. There's a separation there, and Jesus is going to stomp his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying evil forever. All right. So Satan, he's got all this, just like it was in the Old Testament, outside of the kingdom of God, outside of the country, the children of Israel, outside of this nation, where the nations deceived. The kingdom of God was only within the nation of God, the nation of Israel, or the, the children of Israel, the people of God. Outside were the nations deceived. So also, once again, when we're lifted up, all the people on earth, they are deceived by Satan and he goes out to deceive them to gather for the purpose of gathering them together. Just as Jesus has sent his angels to gather us together up into the clouds, so also does Satan gather together the unsaved. All right. And of course, this is the judgment of God. There is no other judgment. Right. The final judgment, if you will, whatever you want to call it. That's fine. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about in the beloved city. Where's the beloved city? I don't know. Beloved city. Oh, right there it tells us. I mean, you couldn't figure it out here by reading John chapter 14. Have you read the Bible? In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Jerusalem, which is above, is free. So now you get to Revelation 20, and all of a sudden you want to change where the beloved You want to say it's on earth? See, calling everything in the uh, everything up to Revelation twenty has been a lie, or is it that you just don't know what the H E double hockey stick you're talking about? It's one or the other. There is no middle ground there. You either don't know the Bible, you don't know squat, or you don't believe it. You either don't know it or you don't believe it. That's your two options. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. This, again, ought to be a, a clue. Man, a clue. A fire came down. What, you think you're going to be down there on the earth when this happens? And fire's going to come down on you? Are you out of your cotton pick in mind? If you're down on the ground... When fire comes down from God out of heaven, you're on the wrong side, Jack. You're in a bad place. You're in a bad place right now, and you're going to be in a bad place when the time comes. Because when this time comes, those of us that are saved are up in the air with God. We're born of God. Born of God, therefore we are God, with God. Up in the air with God. We are the people of God. And so when fire comes down from God, it's coming down from us. All right. Now consider, consider Revelation 3 verse 9. Behold, I will make them come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee. We're up in the air and the enemy is gathered at our feet. Behold, I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. I be and to know that I love thee. Behold, I will make them to come. This is 
I will make them to come. And Satan gathers together the unsaved. I will make them to come and worship before thy feet. And to know that I have loved thee. And fire comes down from God out of heaven and devours them. This is consistent all throughout the Bible. Till I make thine enemies thy footstool. It's consistent all throughout the Bible. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are lifted up. We are separated. The wheat and the tares. And then the tares are burned. Right? Consistent all throughout the Bible. And the devil that seed him was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Okay, so the, we just read about the beast and the false prophet in Revelation 19. This is not an afterwards event. This is the same event. And it's letting you know. Okay? It's not rocket science. It's not confusing. You just read about this in Revelation 19. And so again, when you read about it in this chapter, it's the same event. The same place that you just read about from a different angle. All right. There is not 27 or 59 different ends of the worlds. There are not 400 different ends of the world. There's just one end of the world. Just from a logical standpoint, there can only be one end of the world. Otherwise, the end of the world was not the end of the world. It's not rocket science. Right? So what, what happens is people trust man instead of God, the Word of God. And because of that, you fall for delusions because you deserve it. You deserve to believe nonsense when you don't believe God. You deserve it. Isaiah 66 verse 4. I also will choose their delusions and will bring their fears upon them because when I called none did answer when I spake, they did not hear, but they did evil before mine eyes, and chose that in which I delighted not. All right, so you, you choose to believe what you want, but you're gonna you're in delusion, man. You're delusional if you're not gonna believe what the Bible says what the Word of God, what the written Word of God says, that you're going to fall for delusions. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm not telling you. The Word of God is true. Okay, so, and the devil deceived him cast. Okay, so this is the same thing that we just read about in Revelation. It's not a continuation of, from, it, it, there, Revelation 20 is not a continuation of Revelation 19. That's just ridiculous. Because we, you go back to Revelation 1. <laughs> that's what, repeating myself. I apologize. But, or God uh, shows uh, um, John things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel. And then Revelation 20. And I saw an angel coming down from heaven. It's another vision. All right. It's another vision. So uh, if you don't see it. That you're not changing the truth, buddy. You can't change the truth. Just you can't. You can, you can get an army of people, and it still won't change the truth. All right. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat upon it, sit, or him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. This is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ coming in the clouds of heaven, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. And, and Isaiah 13, they're all over the Bible. Revelation 1. Let's go to Revelation 1. Behold, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him. 
right? All these, this is all consistent here. And I saw a great white throne. It's Jesus. It's not you. It's not going to be anybody but Jesus. He's going to come in the clouds of heaven, and then, of course, in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, Isaiah 13, I showed you. Let's just go and take a ganders at this. You notice it says here in verse 29, The sun shall be dark, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. All right, you, you notice that? It's interesting, isn't it? Right, you look at Mark 13. Mark 13 says... Uh oh, uh oh, where are we at here? The stars of heaven. No, 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 no. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. The stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. Right? Isn't that interesting? And then Luke 21. Well, what's it say in Luke 21 here? Anything? Anything at all? Anything about this at all? Is it just. Uh, is it just going to say, oh no, here it is, that there shall be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars and upon earth the stress of the nations with perplexity, seas and the waves, roaring to men's hearts, failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming upon the earth. This is not a one-time, one-trick pony, man. This is all throughout the Bible, consistent, consistently all throughout the Bible. And I think, I, didn't I show you this earlier? The day of the Lord will come as a thief of the night, in which the heavens and the earth shall pass away with great noise, and, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, what men or persons ought ye to be in all holiness, or in all holy conversation and godliness, looking for and hasting unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Heat. You see the connection here. Again, this is not a one-trick pony, man. This is all throughout the Bible. So when we get here to Revelation 20, verse 11, I saw a great white throne of him that sat on it, and whose fa from whose face the earth and heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. You can't make the connection. Well, it's either because you don't believe it, or you just don't know it. That's the only two options. You don't know what the Bible says, or you don't believe what the Bible says. That's it. That's it. It, it, it should be easy for anybody that's reading the Bible. It really should be. It's not rocket science. Really. It just comes down to believing what you're reading. Because it's all right there. You don't have to have a PhD or a BS or whatever else. College, doctorate, degree. You just have to believe what the Bible says. That's it. In fact, I think it's a detriment to go to Bible college or Bible school. I think it's harmful. It distorts uh, people's views. And uh, I think it ruins people. I really do. Why would you do that if you wanted the truth? You got the truth right here in the book. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books of life according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and the death and hell delivered up the dead which were in it, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see that? It's all connected. It's all connected right. into, and the devil that received them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast of all prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever. And then, blah, 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 blah. and whosoever was not found and written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. See, it's connected there. It's beautiful, beautiful the way this is written. All right, it's 
it's artistic in my mind beautiful and it's consistent with everything that we read all throughout the Bible from Genesis to Revelation all you have to do to have your eyes open is to believe what you read that's the key